Why is an FDRX7 out here? What the f 1994 Mazda RX-7 FD. The official car of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Let's go to Texas. Let's go meet my agent for the first time ever. Have you ever met your own agent? No, I've never met her. Not in person. She lives in Texas. When am I gonna go to Texas? How did you get her as an agent? TikTok? Okay. All right. Ah. This is what I do. Oh. Got. All right, what's the new setup for me? It's proper. It's got like suction cup things. Yeah. <laughs> loud. I didn't like that. Let's plug it in the thing and it went boom. Forever, why don't you could? We're here. Let's go there. Well, one step at a time. While we did have to be back in New York by the end of all this, I plan to make the most of each checkpoint we hit along the way. Today would be the shortest leg of the entire trip at just 12 hours of drive time. But these 12 hours would make or break our entire week because it would be the first stress put on the car that was big enough to find out if it had any ticking time bombs lurking under the surface, something old, low mile cars are famous for. If you're a maiden voyage, one owner, 46,000 mile FDR X7. All right, well, we got 768 miles on one road, which I think is like the entire path pretty much. Current ETA, 1.50 a.m., but we're doing it. I thought everything would fall apart much quicker than this. I wasn't even sure the car existed, to be quite honest with you. I figured we could relax for the first hour because the RX-7 had already driven that the night before, but what I didn't consider was how different the heat is during the day in Arizona. And now that we were driving at interstate speeds, it only took 20 minutes to start a waking nightmare. Adam, am I seeing stuff or is it smoke on my side of the car? Yeah, that's not good at all. Holy shit, that's really bad. What? Where is it coming from? The smoke was coming from the last place I wanted. The entire exhaust pipe was soaked in oil. And even though I couldn't see an obvious fire, my mind was looping every video I've ever seen of a small exhaust fire burning an entire car to the ground. Miraculously though, despite all the smoke and crackling, the oil hadn't actually ignited yet. That was one of the scariest things I've ever felt. Welcome to the Art 7 life. <laughs> Yeah, I should have uh, probably gotten a fire extinguisher. There's literally not a drop of oil under it. So well, you saw I, oil under the car though, right? No, there's oil all over the exhaust, okay. but it's not leaking passively. It's gotta be something dependent on oil pressure. See, I don't use the word miracle lightly. We pulled off so Adam could get a few more drone shots, and if he didn't ask to, we wouldn't have noticed until it was too late. But everything about this was odd. The car was just driving flawlessly, cool in temps and oil pressure never budged. So even though we avoided the worst case scenario, we knew we weren't out of the woods. Yeah, like I said, it's tow truck companies, probably the closest ones they come out of Wilcox. Uh -huh. And they've got a they got a couple of mechanic shops up that way. Just can't walk Literally. <laughs> yeah. So let me go get my paperwork so I can get your information and everything. Yeah, sure thing. When looking at the map to see if there was somewhere we could get the car checked out, it was obvious we weren't spoiled for choice. In fact, there was only one choice to make. Tow the car back to the hotel in Wilcox and start over, or tow it 100 miles towards Texas to Deming, New Mexico, and hope that we could find help there. thousand miles. 46,000 bottles. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's beautiful. Love the car. Tried to kill me. First 50 miles. Just saying. When the tow truck arrived, I asked the driver for his jack to see if I could find the leak. And then I realized the oil wasn't engine oil. It was transmission oil. That is so strange. I didn't know if that was better or worse yet, but either way, it would be something to deal with in the morning. I was trying not to think of the whole time, Coy. But the moment you said RX-7, I was like, yo, we're going to be on the side of the road. 
Oh, look where we are now, Koi. We're literally trapped in the fucking desert. That's only the shit you see in movies. <sighs> trapped in a desert with a car that can drive, but if you choose to drive it, it will light you on fire. So we're going where? About 100 miles out? We're going 100 miles in the right direction, at least. Thanks for coming on the road trip. Hey man, look on the bright side. That RX-7 is getting the best gas mileage any RX-7's ever gotten before. How many miles versus how many miles on a flatbed did your RFC go? It's funny because that shit was rarely ever on a flatbed. We just plateaued <laughs> it or pushed it. <laughs> we were doing the most with that car. But that car was awesome. The best memories ever. The show was sick. Such a sick car. All right, so we have a 930 uh, Deming ETA. It's a really inconvenient time to have kept this car a secret from Ducky. Ah! He thinks I'm buying a C5 because I really want to surprise him. I could use his expertise at this moment, but I can't tell him it because I know I'll slip up and tell him what car it is. I'm going to figure it out. I'm a big boy. I can do this shit on my own. The Toyota Deming looked like the right call. The morning after we got to the hotel, we started looking for shops, and surprisingly, it looked like there were plenty. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> yeah, what time is it? it? I don't know, like nine-ish? The only problem was almost all of them were truck repair shops. The shops that actually serviced cars were overrun with work for weeks. Oh, oh my god. I got omelets. I got biscuits and gravy. Oh, I'm gonna make four choices today. Mm -hmm. Would you like breakfast? Uh, yes. We have to serve you. Oh. Uh, these signs here. Oh. Can I, you speak uh, English? Absolutely. <laughs> Adam, this is what being rich feels like. <laughs> Bro. Oh no. Her post is so fucked. The dragon's looking really far away right oh, we now. We have not moved, dude. <laughs> yeah. Look at how far away from here it is. The tail of the dragon? Yeah. 1600 miles. All right, so we went 20. Let's go to Walmart and buy a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Okay, all right, I think I know, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Having armed ourselves with a little of insurance, we were now off to the only shop in town that offered to help. All right, let's not blow up. No, let's not blow up. I don't know what you thought that was, but I didn't stall. That was really good, Adam. This shit got air suspension. That was just the air suspension. I love the look of that Subaru. And it works. It's crazy. After a nervous seven minute drive, we arrived at Tinley T Tire, greeted by the manager, Mike, who said he was also a bit of a fan of Japanese tuner cars. He even modified one solely for track use. You know, unless you got an FC. So, oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> of all the places we could have stopped, you get later, really. Like, an FC owner. Okay, we'll keep you up here and you can set up right here. Awesome. Thank you. Bewildered that we not only found a shop run by a car enthusiast out here, but a guy that owned and built an RX-7 himself. We crossed our fingers and hoped that he'd have the answer to our mystery problem. And maybe even show us how to fix it properly. That thing is immaculate underneath it, other than that oil drip. Oh! <laughs> this thing was, whoever had it probably didn't even take it out of the rain. No, they had it. They have never taken it out of the rain. What I've seen a lot of these, especially after the car sat for a long time, uh -huh. is the vent will actually plug up. If you look at the vent way up top right there, 
Uh, oh, yeah. You see how it actually looks wet? Uh -huh. So once the transmission starts getting hot and building up pressure, it has nowhere to go. Oh. So, or if the transmission was overfilled and it starts heating up, then it blows it out the vent too. If the vent's clogged, does it fail in a different way? Vents are really important. That's the main cause of any seal fuel. How are you feeling? Hopeful. It's at least one of those things that, like, it's easy to test. Like it didn't take 200 miles to show up. Oh, hey, look, we got a friend. Oh, hell! <laughs> you can stay a little bit further away. Yep, that's on the phone. <laughs> and you're making all kind of friends out here in the desert, except yeah, rattlesnakes. Except the rattlesnakes. When I just want to see, see one. one right here a minute ago. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I think we should pull a plug off of it and see how much oil's in it. This transmission is completely full of fluid. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that was the top one that's out of. With that much oil left, we knew the seals were fine. The transmission was just overfilled and never got hot enough for anyone to find out. Supposedly, we just needed to drain some oil and get things hot again to see if it was really that simple. All right, we're gonna give it a shot. Drive about five miles down, five miles back, put it on the lift and see what happens. Oh my Lord. Look at that. Yeah, it's dry. Completely dry. Wow, you just saved our week. We are good. I got oh, the heat like, shield. We're good. we're good. Oh, I thought I said, did it happen again? And you were like, yeah, we're good. Oh, I was yeah. like, wait, wait. <laughs> this is gorgeous, dude. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely a, a fine. This is a gem. It yeah. still doesn't feel real, partly because I haven't driven it more than 20 miles. <laughs> Take care of this car. After rescuing our entire trip, the only thing Mike would accept in return was a like on Facebook. So I put his link in the description if you also want to go show him some things. I can't believe it. We're good. We're good. We're fucking good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yo, this does not feel fucking real, bro. It's, if it's hot. Yeah, it's hot as fuck. Yeah, but it's like dry heat, like, so we... Because it's easier than the phone rather than staying on the phone and calling each other. How? I don't know. Uh, How? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. What? <laughs> what did you do? I let my foot off the clutch. Did you just pull the e-brake up and just... The e-brake's not even up yet. My foot is on the brake. First of all... <laughs> Isn't it your job to drive cars like every day? Yes. Yes. That That is true, okay? But let me tell you something. Out of all the cars I've driven, not one of them is as tiring to drive. <laughs> Why? Because your clutch feels like one of those tonal workouts, okay? Well, we got food, we got a car, we got another car, and we got a nine hour drive ahead of us. But not before some celebratory sliding. Once we'd finished throwing literal dirt in the face of our good mechanical luck, we'd finally, on day three of this road trip, made it far enough to need to fill up the Mazda for the very first time. We're gonna pull in this gas station up here for another drone shot, no less. And I'm gonna check everything, make sure it's still good, check the oil, get gas for both cars, and do the first and the longest single stint of driving that we will have done with this car. Anything else happens. 
<laughs> and so, having never felt more relieved to realize I'm just an imbecile, an epic route had been very patiently awaiting us, and it was time to finally start chipping away at it. Good. Mm -hmm. I see code one, two, three, five, six, <laughs> eight, nine, ten. Hey, let me Maybe just... it's code forty. Four long, yeah, that 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 because it was kind of long. Oh my god. Smart, man. Solenoid valves, purge control. Verdict. We're just gonna send it. Hopefully we're good. Yeah, I like it out here. I like my bed more. I just burned. That's it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm so confused. Yeah. What? Yeah, baby, <laughs> Yo, I saw the last dude give him his license. Looked at me, said U.S. citizen, so I was like, yeah. He was like, all right, go. Oh, is that? I thought it was like a fork in the road, and he was asking if we were going to the USA, and I was so. <laughs> I didn't hear what he said, but apparently he said U.S. citizen. And my response to that was, USA? That as I heard that shit and I was like, yo, call you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> I thought he said, yo, if I was him, I'd have been like, get him. <laughs> I was just confirming, that's all. Oh my god, I can't see. Oh, I'm too tired of this shit now. I'm too tired of this shit. I think he saw my hair and knew pretty quick exactly where I'm blocked. <laughs> Still haven't crossed 47,000 miles. Still a 46,000 mile RX-7. One more gas stop, and then Austin. Hopefully. At long last, we were finding a stride and making some real progress. With every 100 miles, I trusted the RX-7 a little more, and it was beginning to look like that trust was well placed, because we even managed to use our first full tank of fuel without incident. We got 14.8 and 12. Oh, shit. That means you got better gas mileage than me. Oh, we got someone trying to get ahead. Pull in front of me. Unfortunately, with the mechanical failures behind us, Texas took it upon itself to keep things interesting in a different way. Well, that's not good. Would you say he was going 87? There's your copy of citation. What was the mark speed? 87 and the 80. So slow down, drive safe. Absolutely. There's no fucking way. What? Did this man just give you an 87 and an 80? He didn't make you stand out the car, did he? No, did he get... I was wondering about that, because I heard your voice really clearly. Did they give you a sobriety test? No, they didn't give me a sobriety test, but they did pull me outside the car. He was like, you stand in front of my car for me. And I was like, okay, and he tied me down. Like, not crazy, you didn't put me yeah. up against the car, just fill my pockets just to make sure I was good. Alright, well, I want to set my cruise at 80 again. And just stick with me and you'll be safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do less of the bad thing and more of the good thing. 
thing now. A few more miles led us off the interstate where the deer lined the roads like I have never seen before. Yeah, I'm taking a leak. We got a bunch of deer over there somewhere. I'm gonna put the camera away because if I see a buck just staring me down in this car, I'm running. On the bright side, we didn't have to worry about speeding when we reached the next town. Bro, are you kidding me? Did the car just pull out? Of course it did. All right, now what? Shit, I really couldn't tell you, bro. Huh? Your license plate light? Oh, the license plate light, the one that looks at you Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. how, how fast were you going? Oh, yeah. What, on the interstate? Because for me, all it says is speeding six to 10 miles an hour over. I'm like, <laughs> what kind of crap is that? <laughs> Just a warning for that license plate light. All right, we all be safe, all right? Absolutely. Have a good night. Four ten. We got this. It's only an hour. That's less than like the other side of Manhattan. Okay. Third tries the charm. <laughs> Third tries the charm. Let's make it happen. Let's get this done. Hey, here's some shit I was beginning to think I would never see. Less than a half hour left before we're there. Praise be our Lord and Savior, Keanu Reeves. We arrived at Devon's around 4 a.m. and immediately passed out, but barely slept because of all the adrenaline that got us this far in the first place. After six months of working together, this was actually the first time I'd meet Devon in person or see the car that started it all. This was why I signed. Literally? I was like, oh, she has an Evo. This is why I'm putting my faith in this human. Because... No, it just shows that you like know, you get it, yeah. you know? You get so it. Sad. Like the whole story was such a shit show because I got the car tuned, picked the car up, didn't have time to even test it. Like had to go pick up my friend, floored it on the highway, broke up in like third, fourth gear, couldn't even like go back and get it fixed. And so I had to pick up Jason at the airport because I didn't want to drive all the way from Indiana, Texas, like by myself because my friend can't drive a stick. And we were like, okay, we'll just drive through Texas. We'll sort it out when we get home. But we, it's like midnight. We get an hour outside of here, like hour outside of the house. And I'm asleep in the passenger seat and he's driving. All of a sudden I hear him say, like, we lost compression. Like, we lost compression. Like, we don't have any. Like, I like wake up and I'm like, what did you say? <laughs> I was like, just say that again. What did you say? And so the car just turns off, like in the middle of the highway. We get out of the car. I don't even have shoes on, like nothing. We get out of the car, hop the barrier. I call the cops. I was like, I need you to get a cop out here now. And she's like, are you safe? Like, are you guys in the car? Are you safe? I'm like, we are fine. My car is on the It's just a car. Like, it'll be fine. I'm no, like, no, I it's not. No, I, just imagine me just now getting this car, never having floored it correctly because the tune didn't even work, and then it just getting smashed on the highway so by a fucking semi. In the semi. middle of the highway? Like, in the middle of the oh, Like, in the middle oh. of a lane, and there was nowhere to pull off, so it was like just barriers and like lane and lane together. Oh, and we're like in the side lane. So when semis and stuff were coming up, you couldn't really, really see. see. Like, you just saw brake lights or flashers. Yeah. But like, you're just, they're going so fast. We ended up getting it towed to the house, and then it's been here ever since. Before Devin showed us around Austin, Adam and I sat down to figure out how to trim the day we lost out of the itinerary and still get him back home to New York on time. You're doing a lot. I'm tired as fuck. I know you're tired, bro. Stop. So, we didn't do anything yet. Yeah, we didn't. You know, eight hours, bro. We were like, uh, <laughs> Tomorrow morning, up by six, out by 6.45, ceramic pro by 10. Oh, we're still doing that yeah. here. Yeah, and that goes 10 to 11. So yeah. we'll leave it, so, so that means that we'll get there at four in the morning to drive Tale of the Dragon at like seven in the morning. Oh my God. Seven in the morning, Tale of the Dragon. Crazy. Yeah, so we'll get there at four in the morning, right? That's um, fucking stupid. That's fucking... <laughs> I'm pure curiosity. Do you like ramen? <laughs> I like how you're just chilling in the coffee shop with Premiere open, just walking like out of the car. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Look at that. Those wheels are insane. I love those wheels. Well, we just got coffee. I slept for about three and a half hours according to the ring last night, so that was much needed. Frank, how's the weather? Ah! Sick. 
I so I introduced him heat. to the term dry heat in Arizona, and then I fully, in the span of 20 minutes, watched him adopt the term and own it. Every time oh. he was on the phone, he's like, "Nah, dude, you don't understand. It's a dry heat." It's like, a it's dry heat, though. <laughs> After lunch and a bit of sightseeing around Austin, we asked Devin if there was anything in particular we should do before heading out the next morning, and without hesitation, she said there was only one place we had to go. I came here to the Circuit of the Americas, which I didn't know about until Devin told us. I decided it might be a good idea before we hit the tail of the dragon and my two children to get all of the sort of nonsense driving out on a track in something much less heavy and deadly. So we're here. They said they have a little bit of space for us to get on track for a bit and film some, and I'm super excited. Out of all of us, I don't know who's gonna win. They're playing Rihanna. Anything can happen. <laughs> Yeah, show me what you got! As it turned out, Adam was fast. Very fast. In the first few laps, he made quick work of passing pretty much everyone, and half a track behind him, I was having a very different experience. Okay, all right, these are serious. God damn it, Adam, you're so far away already. But then, when almost all hope was lost, I got a chance at redemption. Once I was in front, the only thing that mattered in my life for the next seven minutes was staying there. I feel like I'm being caught up too. I was, but I wanted to see if I could at least hold him off for a second lap. Ah. Getting on the track, I didn't really know what to expect because, oddly, before the trip, I'd never really seen Adam drive anything. So once I accepted that I was not the fastest on the track that day, I wanted to see if I could at least follow his lines, but even still, he inched further and further away. After they showed us I've somehow managed podium and Adam was literally off the charts, they offered us a ride to see a little bit more of the track. Outside of major motorsport races, like what does a track run on? Karting is a big money. Yeah, really? We, we pull in about like 600 grand a month. What? Revenue. Bro, holy shit. So 60 grand a day to run out the track. Today. Oh, true. So, so do people do like a lot of testing tunes or companies oh, yeah. and then you're, okay, gotcha. After seeing that there was a soccer field and an amphitheater here, we went to the paddocks where we found something pretty special. Bro, flashback to like, what was it? 48 hours ago, 30, less than two days ago, we thought our car was burning to the ground 20 minutes outside of where we started the road trip. This is a pretty good recovery, I would say. With 2,000 miles to go and an alarm set for 6 a.m., our stay in Austin came to an end. We needed to use every minute left here to rest up, and after today, I could at least sleep knowing whenever we made it to the tail of the dragon, my Subaru would be in good hands. We thoroughly did the thing. My tires are cleaner. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. <laughs> I like the design. And I need you all tonight. And I.